Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This talk is about the work Extreme Learning Machines on Kaylee Dixon Algebra Applied for Color Image Autoencoding, a work by me, Guilherme Vieira, and my advisor, Marcos Eduardo Valle, from the University of Campinas, Brazil. A quick outline of this talk. We're going to go over a quick introduction uh, along with the main contributions of this work. Then I'm going to talk about the key aspect of this work, which is the Kaylee Dixon algebras. We're going to go over the concept of extreme learning machines and the extension of that concept to Kaylee Dixon algebras. And lastly, I'm going to show some results we obtained in a color image autoencoding task, along with the conclusions we could draw from it. The main topic of this work are the hypercomplex neural networks, which are neural network models in which the inputs and parameters are encoded in a higher dimensional algebra or higher dimensional space. In the literature, it's pretty common to run into works with the complex numbers, quaternions and octonions, but many more options exist as well. The main strength of this type of model is that they can cope with multiple information signals from one single object into, into a single entity or to cope with them at once. Say, if we have four signals from the same object in a real valid network, we would have to deal with them separately as separate parameters. But in a four-dimensional algebra, we could encode these four signals in one single entity. In this work, we take a look on a family of algebras, the Cayley Dixon, the generalized Cayley Dixon algebras. We devise a framework to deal with operations in these algebras through um, real valued linear algebra computations. Uh, we use this framework to extend the concept of extreme learning machines to this family of the Cayley Dixon algebras. And we also perform an experiment with real valued neural networks and some Cayley Dixon neural networks for comparison into an autoencoding task. The Cayley Dixon algebras are a parametric sequence of algebras defined recursively. So we start off by taking A0 as the ground field or a field. Uh, we define the kth algebra over the product of two copies of the previous algebra, so AK minus 1, which we denote by AK minus 1 with the parameter gamma explicit here. The elements in AK have the form X plus Y times U or simply the ordered pair xy, in which x and y are elements of aq minus 1. u is called the hyperimaginary unit, or simply imaginary unit, and u squared equals to the parameter gamma. And u is not an element of aq. For the operations, the sum can be done entry-wise, and the, param uh, the product by scalar is done in a distributive manner. Now, to perform the product in AK, we need to we need to perform multiple products in AK minus one, and gamma shows up here in the first term. So the product in AK is uniquely defined by the product in AK minus one and the gamma. A simple example that would sound familiar to most people is if we start off by taking the real number as the ground field and we extend it with the parameter minus one, we reach a two-dimensional space in which a, uh, there is one imaginary unit whose squared is equal to minus one, and this is equivalent to the complex numbers. If we extend it once again by choosing minus one as the parameter, which we simply denote as r minus one minus one, this is a four-dimensional space with hyperimaginary units squared equal to minus one, and this is equivalent to the quaternions. One step further takes us into a three, a, an eight-dimensional space, which is equivalent to the octonions. So the complex quaternion and octonions are particular cases of the Cayley Dixon construction. In other words, the Cayley Dixon construction is a generalized version of these algebras. One thing to note here is that with each step, we double the dimension of the algebra obtained. So we started off with the field dimension one, and then we doubled it to get to two, four, and eight, respectively. In the context of neural networks, we are frequently dealing with matrix matrix and matrix vector products. So here we devise a way to deal with those operations in the Cayley Dixon algebra by means of real valued linear algebra. We start by taking an isomorphism between AK and the n-dimensional real Euclidean vector space, in which n is 2 to the kth power, in which the isomorphism is simply taking an element x and arranging its entries in a column vector. 
With this in hand, we define an operator AL, which takes an element in the Kelly Dixon algebra and multiplies it to the left by A. By applying phi to both sides of this equation, we can rearrange the right hand side to show that the product of two elements in the Cayley Dixon algebra can be represented as a matrix vector product in a real linear algebra. Now, this matrix is an operator phi L of A, which is simply of this form. That is, the first column is A times E1. Uh, transformed by the isomorphism. E1 is the first uh, is the element in AK that is associated with the first canonical factor of the basis of the Euclidean space. Same for E2 and so on and so forth up to the n and at dimension. Taking this one step further, so to the product of matrices, if we define C as a product of A times B, we take the expression for each entry of C, so Cij being the product of the ith row and the jth column, and apply phi to both sides here, we reach a similar expression in which we use the operator phi L, which is defined, and the isomorphism to express the matrix C. So simply, uh, as this expression here. If we simply invert the isomorphism, we have an expression that tells us how to obtain a matrix, a Keeley Dixon matrix, by means of real value, real valued linear algebra, so real linear algebra. Now, you can see these operators here have matrices as arguments, and we only define them for elements, but the definition for matrices is pretty straightforward. So phi L of a matrix is simply um, the application of phi L to each entry of the matrix, and then the concatenation of those blocks in a big block matrix. The same is true for the phi, the isomorphism. For the real extreme learning machine model, we have the hidden layer parameters being randomly initialized and fixed throughout the execution so that the output layer parameters can be adjusted through a least squares problem. Um, this is generally done through the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse. So the formulation for the least squares problem is this. We want to minimize the distance of the output of the network to the target vector by adjusting the value of m. This is generally done by calculating the pseudo inverse, so h dagger in this manner, so that m can be um, calculated as h dagger times d. For the Cayley Dixon version, we have to convert the elements in AK to the vectors, to the column vectors, as we just defined in our previous section, and we generate the hidden layer parameters randomly and fixate it in a matrix W. The activation function is used in a split manner so that the, for example, the hyperbolic tangent of xi is simply the hyperbolic tangent applied to each entry of x and the output of the hidden layer is h, the hyperbolic tangent of x times w. Then to formulate the Cayley Dixon least squares problem, we simply have to define a norm in AK. So taking a matrix in AK, we define the Frobenius norm of it as the Frobenius norm of phi, uh, phi of A. And the Cayley Dixon least squares problem is then formulated as the minimization of the distance of HM to the target factor in the Frobenius norm. And we adjust M by the pseudo inverse. Um, to calculate the pseudo inverse in the Cayley Dixon algebra, we can simply use the framework we developed previously and pseudo invert this real matrix right here. So, this is the expression that allows us to solve the Cayley Dixon least squares problem by means of the calculations in a real valued linear algebra. To showcase the performance of the proposed models, we chose a color image autoencoding task. Um, an autoencoding task is a task in which the input and output pairs are the same image or the same object, and we have a hidden layer with lesser neurons than the dimension of the input. This forces the model into some sort of feature selection. For example, they have to take a higher dimensional object, in this case the image, compress it into a lesser dimensional space, the neurons in the hidden layer, and then further reconstruct the original object from uh, fewer parameters. Um, this is extremely important in information theory because it allows us to share compressed information with minimal loss. 
So for our experiment, we chose the SciFi 10 data set, which is usually taken for classification tasks, but it has also been employed in autoencoding tasks. Each batch has 10,000 images. We used one of them for training and one for testing. We chose four for dimensional algebras, R minus one minus one. These are the quaternions. R minus one plus one, this is an algebra known as the split quaternions or co-quaternions. R plus one minus one and R plus one plus one. Each image is a 32 per 32 RGB encoded image for a total of 3072 real inputs or 1024 for dimensional inputs. To make the networks of comparable size, we chose uh, the number of neurons in the hidden layer as 600 for the real case and 450 for the Cayley Dixon case, so that the total number of parameters for, the, for each architecture is the same. These showcases some of the results. From left to right, we have the original image, the real valued model output, and each of the four Cayley Dixon models. The first row is an image in the training set, and the second row is an image in the test set. Uh, we can see that all of the models were able to reconstruct very similarly the input. Now, for um, some metrics we chose were the peak signal to noise radio and the structural similarity. Now, here we can clearly see that the real valued model and the quaternion model were vastly outperformed by the other three Cayley Dixon models, uh, both on the training set and the test set. And the algebra R plus one minus one was the one to outperform each one of the others. So this was our, um, our best performer here. By showing the box plot of the results, we can also see that the Rio and the quaternion models are below the average for the others. Now, to talk a little bit about the conclusions of this work, um, the two main contributions we had were first, the framework we were able to provide for the Cayley Dixon matrix algebra. We were able to convert nicely these operations into real valued linear algebra operations. And second, the formulation for the Cayley Dixon least squares problem. So we formulated this problem as a multiplication of real matrices. So pretty simple, pretty effective, allows us to take advantage of the fast computational software we have available. And for the experimental results, we could show that all of the hypercomplex models outperformed the real valued one with the same total number of parameters, meaning they were more adequate for this task. The best performer was a quite unusual Cayley Dixon algebra. If you check the literature, you're basically going to find um, most jobs based on quaternions. And this algebra is quite never mentioned, but it outperformed the quaternions by the, a very decent margin. And nonetheless, all of the Cayley Dixon models showcased a high structural similarity level, meaning they were very good at reconstructing the original image with minimal loss. So they were very adequate for this task. This is all for this presentation and this work. Thank you very much for the attention and the opportunity. And that's it. Thank you.